You never know where the next great treasure of discovery might take place. It could happen thousands of miles away on the other side of the world, or it could take place in your hometown or city. Archaeologists and treasure hunters are always looking for their next prize, but they've found plenty already. The proof is right here in this video. Of course, you don't have to be an archaeologist or a treasure hunter to come across something remarkable from the distant past. In October 2022, a beet farmer tending his fields in Opava, Czechia, was stunned to discover a unique Bronze Age era gold belt in a field he'd worked hundreds of times before. The belt was crumpled into a ball when he found it, but he thought enough of it to take it indoors, rinse it, and straighten it out a little. Professional archaeologists would probably rather that he hadn't tampered with it so much, but they can at least see that it's a remarkable find. The belt has been analyzed in the Silesian Regional Museum and has been determined to be made of 84% gold, 15% silver, and trace elements of copper and other metals. The decorative style of the diadem has been used to determine a date range for the artifact, which begins in 1400 BCE and ends in 800 BCE. While experts now mostly agree that the object is a belt, the object is so thin and delicate that it was initially thought to be a tiara. Scandinavia is the right place to look if you're in search of Viking treasure, and so it proved to be the case again when a Viking hack silver hoard was found in Stjordal, Norway in December 2021. There are 46 individual artifacts in the hoard, all of which are silver, but only two of which are entirely intact. The rest of them have been deliberately broken into pieces. Before that happened, they were coins, necklaces, chains, wires, and bracelets. The hoard is unusual because most Vikings hack silver finds are made up of various fragments of different objects. In this case, all the pieces of each object are still present in the hoard. The Vikings cut silver up like this because they used the pieces as a form of currency, with the value of each piece based on its weight. Norway was a late adopter of coin-based currency, with no coins minted in the country until the 9th century. These silver pieces were hacked early in that century and would have replaced the barter-based economy that existed before it. The total value of the hoard would have been worth about half the price of a cow at the time. We've just seen some hacked Viking silver, so how about some unhacked Viking silver? A silver hoard made up of precisely that has recently been discovered within the ancient Viking settlement of Tabby in Sweden. The collection is made up of coins and silver jewelry, all of which are in pristine condition. It was found beneath the wooden floor of a Viking Age house where it was hidden deliberately around a thousand years ago. The eight braided neck torques in the collection are in exceptionally good condition, but the two arm rings, 12 coins, set of beads, and single silver finger ring are in better condition than the average for finds like this. All of the coins have perforations on them, suggesting that they may once have been worn as pendants. Not all of the coins are Viking. There are individual examples from Bavaria, Bohemia, and England, reflecting the size and range of the Viking trade network. Another of them, which was minted in France during the 10th century, is the only example of its kind ever found. The coin is only known because of drawings of it that exist in a book from the 18th century. When metal detectorists go detectoring, they dream of finding something made of solid gold. Such discoveries are incredibly rare, but here's one that recently happened in Blair Drummond, Scotland. It's a solid gold sword pommel, and it's recently been acquired by National Museum Scotland from the detectorist who found it in 2019. Experts at the museum say the artifact is around 1300 years old and once sat at the top of a sword handle. Gold work from this period is exceptionally rare in Europe, and in England it's virtually unknown. The quality of the craftsmanship that went into the making of the piece is supreme, which partially explains why the museum has valued the tiny object at 30,000 pounds. Aside from being gold, the pommel is encrusted with garnets. The intricate patterns in the gold work feature depictions of religious motifs and mythical creatures, 
blending the elements of Anglo-Saxon England and the imagery of the early medieval Scottish kingdoms. This is the insular art style made famous by the manuscripts known as the Lindisfarne Gospels, but it's rare to see it on a solid object rather than in an illustration. Archaeologists in Russia have spent the past few months digging into the Krasnodar Krai region of the Taman Peninsula, and their efforts have been rewarded by the discovery of a warrior's burial. Inside the warrior's tomb, the team found an ornate sworn of Iranian origin – glass jugs, metal cooking utensils, belt tips, buckles, and harnesses. Based on the evidence, they believe the warrior was buried between the 4th and 6th centuries but a more accurate date will be obtained once tests have been carried out on his remains. The fact that the sword is Iranian suggests that the warrior had either a cultural or political connection to either the Neo-Persian or Sasanian empires. He may have even been given the sword as a gift, or he might have taken it as a military trophy. He himself wasn't Neo-Persian, though. He came from the Bosporan Kingdom and likely held elite status in Phanagoria. Not far from the burial was another tomb, that of a woman who died during the first century and was laid to rest with a silver medallion carefully placed on her chest. The medallion depicts Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love and beauty. As medallions like this weren't thought to have been worn in the Bosporan kingdom until the second century at the earliest, the discovery is quite an anomaly. If you want to travel internationally, you'll need a passport. If you want to travel to paradise in the afterlife, the ancient Greeks believed that you needed a passport for that too. The Lamella Orfica is an example of such an artifact. It's an engraved piece of gold foil and it's around 2400 years old. Engraved into the foil is the name of the deceased and confirmation of their spiritual purity, which the dead hoped would be enough to gain them entry into Elysium and also ward off any evil spirits that they might encounter while traveling from the physical realm to the divine one. While the Lamella Orfica is the best preserved and best known example of such a passport, between 30 and 40 other examples have been found at burial sites across the ancient Greek regions of the Mediterranean. As well as extolling the virtues of the people they were buried with, the passports also contained instructions for how to behave in the afterlife so the deceased would have a handy travel guide for their new location. The artifacts are associated with the cult of Orphism, but historians can't agree on how big a deal Orphism was. Some of them don't think it ever existed at all. The Vettersfeld treasure is so named because it was discovered by accident in Vettersfeld in the province of Brandenburg, close to Gubin in Poland, in 1882. Its origins are mysterious, but it's considered to be one of the best examples of how the Scythians love to make animal art. The entire treasure hoard is now in Antikin Samlung, Berlin. There are various objects in the hoard, but the most significant include an electrum plaque in the shape of a fish, which may originally have been a shield ornament. The body of the fish is covered in reliefs of other animals, including a panther, a deer, and a lion. Experts think it was made by artisans somewhere in the north coast of the Black Sea, perhaps Olbia, as a bespoke piece for a Scythian prince. All of the objects in the hoard are about 2,600 years old. The mystery about the origins of the hoard is connected to where it was found. Other than the presence of the treasure, there's no evidence that the Scythians ever came this far north in Europe. Was it buried during a Scythian expedition into Poland? or are these objects the spoils of a war with the Scythians? Since we're talking about Scythian treasures, this would be a good time to introduce you to the golden pectoral of Tovsta Moila. This ancient Scythian treasure was recovered from a burial mound in the south of Ukraine in 1971, not far from the city of Pokrov. When translated into English, Tovsta Moila means fat barrow which is a fairly inauspicious name for a very auspicious artifact. This stunning breastplate probably belonged to a Scythian chieftain, but may not be Scythian in origin. Scientists think it's more likely that it was made by Greek artisans living in Pantasipium on the Black Sea, a part of the world we know today as Crimea. There's some debate about that, though. 
The style of the piece is Greek, but the imagery of it is distinctly Scythian. Because of that, it may have been built to order for a Scythian who knew that Greek craftsmanship was better than anything they would have found closer to home. Rather than being made from a single piece of gold, the breastplate was created by soldering dozens of individually cast pieces, a remarkable achievement for someone who lived more than a thousand years ago. We're back to treasure hoards now, and we're specifically talking about the Rekka Devnia Hoard. This is the most valuable and significant collection of 1st, 2nd, and 3rd century Roman coins ever to be discovered, and it was found close to the town of Devnia in northern Bulgaria in 1929. Back in the time of ancient Rome, Devnia was known as Marcianopolis. Each of the coins in the hoard is a denarius, and there are over 81,000 of them in total. The oldest of the coins were minted during the reign of Mark Antony, of which there are 29. And the most recent is a single coin bearing the face of Herennius Etrusius, who was briefly emperor in 251. For reasons nobody can recall, the hoard was divided into two after it was discovered, with 68,783 coins sent to the Museum of Sophia and the remaining 12,261 to another museum in Varna. Other emperors featured on the denarii include Nero, Otho, Aelius Caesar, Claudius Albinus, and Julia Palla. Without the discovery of this collection, constructing the chronological sequence of coinage from the era would likely have been impossible. In 1978, a gravedigger set about his business in a churchyard in Pentney, Norfolk, England. He didn't know it, but he was about to find a collection of Anglo-Saxon jewelry that's now known as the Pentney Hoard. It's a small hoard in terms of volume, made up of just five silver openwork disc brooches and a sixth brooch made of silver and copper alloy. But it's such a significant find in terms of the jewelry of that era that it was immediately acquired by the British Museum, where it's been on display ever since. Each of the brooches is decorated in a distinctive manner known as the Treywhittle style of the 9th century. Five of the brooches are believed to have been made during that century, with one, the smallest in the collection, made about a century earlier. All of them are intact with their pins, springs, and hinge components all present. The rarity and condition of the brooches contribute heavily to their value. When the British Museum bought them in 1978, it did so for £137,000. That's the equivalent of £670,000 today. The lucky gravedigger received all of the money, but he donated £25,000 of his windfall to the church he worked for. Here's another ancient treasure that was found in England, but this one isn't Anglo-Saxon. It's the Corbridge Lanx so named because it was found close to the village of Corbridge in Northumberland, England in 1735. The artifact is a silver dish made during the country's Roman era, probably in the 4th century as the Roman period of occupation drew to a close. More treasure was found at the same time as the Corbridge Lanx, but the dish is the only thing left. All the other artifacts disappeared and were likely sold on the black market, but none of them has ever been found again. The Corbridge Lanx survived because it became the property of the Dukes of Northumberland, but the incumbent Duke sold it to the British Museum in 1993. The tray is exquisitely well decorated with scenes drawn from ancient myth and legend, and was likely used as a serving dish during banquets. Some historians believe it might instead have been a ritual tray used during sacrifices, but there's no solid evidence to support the idea. Similarities have been noted between the Corbridge Lanx and Mildenhall treasure, but there isn't thought to be a connection. The Golden Man of Issyk is the grand title given to the occupant of a burial mound that was found in Issyk, Kazakhstan in 1969. Inside the mound, which is of a style known as a kurgan, were the skeletal remains of its occupant, funerary goods, the equipment and weapons of a warrior, and more than 4,000 gold ornaments. Scientists have been able to tell us that the tomb's occupant was only around 18 years old when they passed away, but have never been able to determine their gender. 
Their tender age means they're unlikely to have achieved much on the battlefield, so the vast quantity of valuable items in their grave means it's more likely they were either a prince or a princess of the Saka people and died somewhere between 1500 and 1600 years ago. The fact that they've gone on to be known as the Golden Man of Isik has more to do with cultural norms in Kazakhstan than anything scientific. Nevertheless, they're now a cultural symbol of the country and their likeness can be seen on the Independence Monument in the city square of Almaty, as well as the presidential standard of Nursultan Nazarbayev. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.